Human beings are created as those who are supposed to transform the world. We're created as those who make and use tools and technologies and techniques. It's one of the things that separates human beings as those created in the image of God from the animals. As those who make tools, we are equipped to transform and change the world. But yet in the process, we also change ourselves. This can be a very good thing. Tools can be extensions of the person. We can think about this particularly in the example of musical instruments. The musical instrument can be in, seen as an extension of the body. The wind instrument extends the power of the breath. The percussion instrument extends the power of the limbs to make rhythmic noises. We might think about the ways that other musical instruments express other aspects of the body. For instance, a stringed instrument in terms of the precision of the movement of the hand. When we look at these instruments, we are seeing something about the potential of the body extended. And our technology is often like this. The tool is something that enables us to work with more effectiveness. For instance, in the original Adamic task of tilling the soil. When you've got a hoe or a rake or a spade, you can do far more things with the soil than you could with your bare hands. Even more so when you've got a plow. The connection between technologies and tools and human beings is a deep one then. As human beings, we dress ourselves with the world. We wear clothing in a way that other animals do not. We're also those who extend our bodies out into the world as we develop and use technologies. Some animals may have rudimentary tool use, but human beings are tool creators and tool users on a level that completely exceeds anything that any animal can show. The power and promise of technology can be seen at many points in Scripture. If we read the story of the Tower of Babel, it's interesting to notice that the story begins with the invention of a new technique. It's the ability to fire bricks that gives the promise of building these grand structures that leads the people to plan the building of the great Tower of Babel. The technology gives rise to the promise and the hubris of the great plan of the tower. In the same way, when we develop new technologies, we can often have a sense of godlike capacity, of the ability to remake the world in our image in a way hitherto unimagined. When we think, for instance, of the internet and of virtual reality and things like that, we can make our own worlds. We can live out and inhabit these worlds in ways that are unimaginable to those who have preceded us. Technology in the modern world, then, is far more pervasive and far more immersive. So much of modern life is mediated by technology in a degree to which it was never mediated before. Many of the things that you would formerly have enjoyed in real life interactions with people are now mediated by technology. This very interaction here is one mediated by technology, whereas previously you would have maybe attended a talk and heard me speak in person, now through the wonders of the internet and um, visual technology, I'm able to record something that can be shared over large spans of time and space. As a result, the limitations of my body are less keenly felt. Yet in feeling less keenly the limitations of my body, there is something about my humanity that can over time become obscured to me. One of the challenges of modern society is that in adapting to our new technologies, there are many aspects of human existence that have become obscured, that have become opaque in various ways. We might think about the struggles that so many young people have with identity and around issues of gender. Would these issues have existed in anything like the same degree had it not been for virtual existence on the internet? The degree to which our identities are so crafted in a virtual and unreal realm, a realm in which we are not feeling the deep gravity of reality. In such a context, the technology is something that can alienate us from ourselves. What we have created is something that can make us forget who we are as its creators. The challenge that we have with technology is to make the world and to remake the world in a faithful way, in a way that is in keeping with our identity as those who have been created in the image of God to continue his creative work, and in a way that is informed by his creative coordinates 
the ways that he has given us a sense of who we are in his world and what our calling is within it. Unless we keep our bearings in such a manner, we will struggle to use new technologies well. So often we'll find ourselves lost as these new technologies give us potentials that should not actually be followed. They might detract from or diminish our grasp upon our humanity. One of the things that the Lord did after the fall of man and again at the time of the Tower of Babel is to limit man's capacity to stand as an obstacle to his technological prowess and effectiveness in the world, precisely in order to save man from himself. Man can create his own prison through his technology. And so the frustration of man's labor is in part a grace to ensure that the effectiveness of man's labor does not end up destroying him. The fact that the earth brings forth thorns and thistles to Adam's labor is in part a blessing. It's ensuring that nature will always resist us. It will always provide some degree of friction to ensure that our sinful desires will not find their full effect. And so much of technology is an attempt to escape the friction of the world. A friction that is in part a judgment and a curse, but also a friction that is in part a blessing and a means of holding us back from our true potential. When the Lord speaks about the sin of Babel, he recognizes that if they are allowed to go on this course, nothing will be withheld from them. And so his concern is to ensure that man's technological purposes do find limits, that they are not allowed to achieve whatever they want. At the Tower of Babel, the Lord prevents man from achieving his full purpose. The concern is that if they are allowed to achieve that full purpose, nothing will be withheld from them. Just as access to the tree of life would have enabled man to intensify his sin and to continue in sin and never to be cut off from his sin, so the access to the power of technology can be a dangerous one for man. And the Lord's concern to limit man's access to the tree of life, just as the Lord's concern to frustrate the Tower of Babel, can maybe provide some cautionary lessons for us in our day and age too. Great technologies in the power of a sinful humanity is not an unalloyed blessing. It can be a means by which man becomes the mediator of God's judgment upon his own sin. 